Laser engraving opens up a world of possibilities in 3D printing. You can really enhance your prints, but not every filament reacts the same and not all of the techniques are super obvious. So when Excel sent me their F1, I was really in love with this machine. I liked the form factor and the general ease of use. So I set out to do as much with this and 3D prints as I could. My last laser was kind of bulky and took super long to set up, so I never ended up using it. But with this device, I'm actually excited for it. Since lasers affect filaments and especially colors differently, I wanted to do some testing first to just kind of see how it was gonna work, how it was gonna come out. And the way I did that was I cracked open a fresh box of bamboo filament swatches because that's like the best overview of different colors and different filaments that I had pretty much easy and ready to go. So then I sorted them first into the different filaments. So here I have PTG, ABS and then PLA. And then here you can see these are all the colors and I'm gonna laser over these with different strength and then see how much of a mark they do make or if any to just kind of get a feel how well does it laser, how much power do you need to affect each of these filaments. The cool thing is x also sent me the air purifier which is really nice since lasering plastics inside is not the best thing for your health. So let's set it up and laser some PLA. From my first test, pretty much all of these basic PLAs laser pretty well. I'm actually surprised of how well this went. I was assuming that some of the lighter tones pretty much wouldn't laser at all, but they all went pretty good. You can definitely see that the darker tones will have bigger engraving or deeper engraving as opposed to lighter colors, which doesn't make sense because it obviously absorbs the light way better if it's a darker filament tone. Also one thing that I found really interesting was the gold one, which kind of looks bubbly and super unclean, so there must be something in the filament that kind of reacts weirdly. The last thing that I could see is that the PLA basic white pretty much didn't engrave at all, whereas the matte one did engrave. So all of this is really interesting and just shows that before you're lasering, you really gotta test your material and check out, you know, what makes sense. Does it make sense to even engrave the material at all and which settings do you need for each specific color and or material. So now I'm gonna test PTG and ABS. So PTG was a little bit more interesting. To no surprise, the transparent PTG pretty much didn't laser at all, but if you want to laser stuff like this, then I'll have a tip for you later that might actually solve that problem. Other than that, most of them still laser pretty well, but some of them actually start to smoke and you can see that they're a little bit scorched. It seems that with PTG you have to look out a little bit more and definitely when you laser always be around the thing and be sure because of the fire hazard and everything that you're there to intervene if anything happens. And next up we're trying ABS, bear with me. I just want to add that even with something like this air purifier, there's still a lot of smell of, you know, burn or molten plastic in the air. So there's definitely still, I don't know, stuff that you probably shouldn't breathe. So ideally you do it fully outside or in a very well ventilated room, you know, just leave the area while it's lasering while still monitoring it somehow or maybe you know you can still use some a mask or some kind of personal protection equipment because if you're doing this especially for longer and more it's probably not healthy but with this testing out of the way let me give you a quick overview over the filaments i tested and how they were affected the black abs lasered pretty perfectly like most of the darker colors but there's also some surprises like this light blue that was really hard to laser at all and this is interesting because for example the yellow which is also really bright lasered way better compared so I think it also really depends on the color and how that kind of jives with the light of the laser depending on if you're using a diode laser or an infrared laser. So all of this might affect your results. Also for example ABS white has pretty much no markings at all so this will be hard to laser. To me really interesting as I said before was that this PLA basic didn't really engrave very well whereas the PLA matte 
on the other hand, went a lot better. Still not great, but it's interesting that the matte factor makes a big difference. It makes sense that one reflects the light from the laser a little bit more than the other, but still I wouldn't have thought it made this big of a difference. So while you'll still have to do your own tests depending on your filament, because there's a lot of variability between each one, I think this helps you understand why you have to test and what you kind of have to test for. To me, I think the main factor is the lightness of the filament. So dark filaments are usually way better to engrave or laser than really light ones, and this makes a lot of sense. But also the color can make a difference depending on your laser specifically, and also then you know, the matteness, so matte PLA lasering better than the more shiny basic PLA. In terms of the different filaments, I think all of these went fairly well, but of course it's important to know how much fumes you're setting out and they have a little bit different melting temps, so you might have to go up and down a little bit. So in the end, you'll have to definitely do trial runs and there's this really handy feature in the laser software where you can try out a bunch of different settings and then see which is really the result that you want. Obviously for that, you'll need something that's kind of sacrificial to laser into to try this out, but in the end, it's the cleanest and best way to really get the results you want. Also, one really cool filament that I didn't show here at all is marble PLA or other marble filament. Because this has white and dark spots. If you put this under the laser, you pretty much laser out the dark spots. And then it's really cool because you're kind of having a negative laser. You know, it doesn't really engrave, but you'll have this normal, you know, white with dark flecks in it. And then there's a gonna be a purely white area that kind of spells out whatever you're lasering. So that can be a really cool effect. One of the biggest areas where lasers and laser engraving have a big upside over 3D printing is when it comes to, as it makes sense, engraving or embossing text or logos. With 3D printing, these are often really undefined, not super sharp, and also lead to a bunch of problems depending on which side you want to place them on. As an example, I'm gonna print this cube here with text on pretty much each side, on the side debossed or embossed, and then on the top and on the bottom. And so I think this is gonna be really interesting. I'm also printing it in two sizes because I think with 3D printing, the smaller the text is, the less clear it's gonna be, whereas bigger text usually isn't a big problem. So I'm gonna test this, and then we're gonna try the same thing, but with the laser. I now have my two cubes here with embossed and also debossed text. Some of the text doesn't look that good great. Here with the deboss you can see a lot of little details that aren't perfect. At the bottom it's actually pretty good but you know it's not as I would want it. Then with the really small one you can see that things fall apart even more just because small details like this are you know where we get to the limit of the 0.4 millimeter nozzle and things start yeah especially at the bottom just kind of creep together. So all of this is kind of what I expected, and now let's see how we can do with a laser. After lasering this, you can see a lot of what I talked about before. With the laser, the hard part is really dialing it in the laser. On the first try, I just completely melted through the top or side layers of my cube, which obviously didn't look too great. Then I was still too strong, but in the end I dialed it in, and once I had that dialed in, I really liked the result, and you can get a really sharp and cool designs here. One little extra tip for me, if you wanna do something with laser engraving and getting a texture in, it can be really Really nice to get an extra wall layer or two in there so you have more depth that you can actually laser into before lasering through the whole outer shell. With this you can see this is filled out but I also really like the design that just traces the outlines because I think that's a super clean look. So for day-to-day -day stuff I'm not sure if it's needed but definitely if you're trying to sell a product or just getting the highest quality then I think a laser really makes the difference. You can still read the 3D printed text it's just way less nice. The next idea is a little bit more creative but I also think it gives you a really high quality finish. I've had this bamboo wood PLA laying around for a while and while printing with it it has a really nice wooden color but I think the really important thing about wood often is also the texture and the grain that it has. And of course you don't really get that with PLA and printing. But then I thought about it. It shouldn't be too hard to take a wood grain texture from the internet, take that in the software, make a grayscale, and then just engrave that onto my wood PLA print. So I'm gonna try that and see what the results really are and how well it actually works. 
Wow, this is really cool. So you can already see with this slight wood grain in there, it already looks a lot more realistic. I think I could engrave this a little more deeper even for it to be cooler, but in general, this really transforms the filament and I think makes this print look so much better. The second version I engraved even deeper and honestly, it now looks really good. I mean, yeah, it still doesn't look perfectly like real wood, but it got a lot closer and I think it really elevates this 3D print and that's what I'm trying to do today. And my last plan in terms of laser engraving I think is pretty cool because it doesn't just add some sort of design or you know looks wise but it actually changes the functionality. What I'm trying to do is put a pattern into my print. You can also do that just for design purposes but in this case I want to put knurling on it. That means it's this little like engraved texture that's going to give you more grip and it's not something that you can really easily replicate with 3D printing. Yes you could use something like fuzzy skin but then only on the sides and not the top or the bottom and with this you can just really get this right and I think that's really cool for certain parts. This knurling pattern would be most useful on a handle or a grip. Sadly, I don't have the rotary tool attachment that allows you to perfectly engrave round objects, which would be perfect for, you know, what I'm trying here, but still I'll just try it on some other object and just give you the idea. So to make this knurling effect, I made a grayscale depth map and this just shows where it shouldn't laser at all and where it should laser in the deeper groove. Then you just take this, make a big pattern out of it and just take that image into the software. They'll tell it that black means laser a lot, whereas white means don't laser at all. And like this, we can even get this gradual lasering down. Just make sure that you have the resolution to kind of get that pattern in. And I'm really excited for this and how it's going to come out in the end because I think this can really add something to this handle grip that I'm trying to laser and make even better to carry. So it actually worked really well and this has this nice kind of knurling pattern in the grip now. Since this is kind of round, it's not in all areas, but it's in a lot of areas and where it counts. And I really like this idea. And yeah, this is how you can really easily just add extra functionality to a 3D printed part with your laser. I almost forgot that I wanted to show you the marker trick. This one's really nice if you have stuff that you can't otherwise really engrave because maybe it's too reflective or like this, it's just see-through. So it's really hard to engrave it. And the easy way to do this is take this black marker and then just kind of marker over the area that you want to laser. Now you have a black surface and this is something that the marker can penetrate and put heat into. This can really help you laser things you otherwise couldn't. This works really well on glass and also on 3D printing. So I have a whiteboard marker here because that's relatively easy to remove in the end. And that's kind of the problem with 3D printing that the black ink sometimes gets stuck in between the layer lines and is really hard to remove. So this is where it might work a lot better on glass than a 3D printed object. Still, it works. But like this, you can fairly easily laser parts that you otherwise couldn't, so I hope this helps you for the future. And while everything I talked about so far really catered to 3D printing, there is many, many more cool uses where you can use a laser engraver. One thing is obviously just customizing stuff where, you know, when you have it, you'll just laser engrave it. And I think it looks so nice and it's still the coolest way to personalize something, be it, you know, your MacBook and iPad or whatever you want. It's just really nice looking. Another thing is trinkets. And obviously maybe if you're not doing it professionally, you're not gonna buy a laser for this, but if you already have it, it can be really nice. So for example, for a wedding, I'm gonna laser engrave some little wood cutouts for the bar and stuff like that, which can really look cool and super premium if you have the ability to make something like that. And lastly, what I really like it for is personalizing stuff in terms of putting my name on it. As a video creator, you have a lot of stuff and on shoots, oftentimes many different people bring their stuff and you still have to know what belongs to who. And well, of course I use stickers and other stuff like that. Stickers can often peel off and then in the end you don't know what's what anymore. With laser engraving, you of course have it perfectly engraved and it's not gonna come off ever. And I really like that, plus it just looks cool. 
So just to kind of summarize, I think there are so many cool uses for a laser, specifically for 3D printing, but also for a lot of other use cases. Let me know in terms of the 3D printing ones, if you thought about these and if you like them and if I forgot other ones and there's other ways to kind of incorporate it and make more cool stuff. That being said, I really wanted to say thank you to Xtool for sending the F1 over again. This one is a really cool laser because I just like the intuitiveness. It's so user friendly in terms of the small format that it has, so it's easy and fast to set up, but also the app is really nice to use and you can even use it through your phone. So in all of the ways that you can use it, it's just kind of streamlined and cool. You don't have to really, you know, dive deep into everything, which I always appreciate. So if you're looking for a laser, check out the link in the description down below. I really like this and also the other devices that Xtool has. So depending on your needs, just check them out. If you're not done watching cool YouTube videos yet, you should check out this video that I made about my favorite 3D printing tools, because I think all of these can be really helpful in the day to day and just enhance your printing experience. So check that video out and hopefully you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.